One more minute, yeah. So, okay. So, in uh, in conclusion, in conclusion, I think uh, it's a, I think I think it's a, the, the generally. I think I think uh, the survey uh, feel uh, quite a positive uh, note about uh, improvement from the surveys that have been carried out. Uh, 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 a decade ago as well as in 2014, and uh, there was there was also uh, some. We also asked uh, many other questions, uh, including some key expectations by 2025. And uh, again, I think we, here we see that uh, uh, the uh, issues such as good governance, corruption, this tank very highly. They want to see uh, ASEAN to be a uh, region that is uh, better governed as well as uh, you know uh, that has less corruption and then uh, uh, and then a lot also uh, want to talk about like uh, the, the, the capacity of ASEAN to be able to conserve and sustainably manage the region's bio uh, diversity. So uh, uh, last but not least, uh, the last uh, the last the last uh, slide. So just for your information, the uh, Hadithi Center along in partnership with the uh, uh, area also we did uh, one other chapter about the, the role of the the non-state actors engagement with ASEAN. So we look at the uh, we look at the, the, the impact of the uh, engagement that have been carried out between uh, you know, different non-state actors such as uh, academia, uh, uh, NGOs, and so on and so forth in the different uh, platforms uh, that ASEAN has initiated or has been initiated by the non-state actor themselves. So uh, please, I mean, if you like uh, to see the outcome of the survey study, uh, I think uh, uh, it's also available in one of the volumes. Uh, I think I will get the uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to invite Kiran. Kiran is with the Arsenal Qatari. He also undertook uh, this similar survey. And let's see what are the results of that Arsenal Qatari did using their ASEAN website. Answer to the question, I am an ASEAN citizen as well, close to 80%. Very close to 80%. Next 
thought that they were less than citizens. And this is very close to Ilias, which was at 78%. Next one, please. Um, do you have any views or expectations about ASEAN? Yes, overwhelmingly, 83%. Next one, please. And looking at the need in your country should cover more about ASEAN's progress and putting together those who strongly agree and those agree is about 81%. I believe Ilia was 70%. So as I mentioned earlier, there's more of a positive slant to the results we got through, through our website. Um, the media in your country should cover more about ASEAN's progress, achievements and challenges. Again, about 95%. If you calculate strongly, agree and agree. And the youth, next one, please. Um, next. Okay. And using uh, school textbooks to socialize, 95% um, of the population felt that it was I understand from the report that if, um, there was some misgivings on textbooks being outdated, but with this survey, it felt that that was really good. Okay, next one, please. Uh, we added two questions which wasn't part of the area survey, just to see um, um, how open people were to listening to listening to music and watching films from other ten countries. Um, we found that 17% uh, said they do it often. Sometimes it's about 48%, rarely 27%. So between often and sometimes it's 65%. Okay, next one please. And this is another question that uh, we didn't be included. I'm interested in learning songs and only reading stories about ASEAN countries. Often and sometimes that added up to 87%. So these are different modes that we can be using to communicate and perhaps build up ASEAN awareness in a friendlier manner. Okay, next one please. Um, 21 issues based on various questions were put in and ASEAN Secretary added another four more questions in terms of priority. The four uh, issues that they added were social protection of vulnerable groups, infectious diseases for such concerns, um, peace and security in the region, and youth involvement and empowerment. And the top five was climate change and natural disaster, Quality, education, provision and access. Peace and security within the region, that's the question which um, was not on the area survey. Agriculture and food security, and youth involvement and, and empowerment was also the new question. Corruption, which was number one, did not make it in the top five. It was number nine. Um, and the other one, human rights, made it at number ten. So we can see the priorities are a little different. Okay, uh, next one please. And the least it, bottom five that was not, not important was a custom sufficiency, access to high quality affordable financial services, land use, energy provision, and the new person we, we, we added, social protection of vulnerable groups, unfortunately did not include it. Yes. So again, use education on uh, how we need to be promoting and educating our people. Okay, next one please. Expectation on ASEAN. These are some of the comments received, and I put some of them together. There was a lot equating ASEAN with the European Union. So, ASEAN, for ASEAN to be to evolve and be more similar to the European Union, issues of racism also came out. Um, for ASEAN to be more integrated in fighting racism, for ASEAN to become a self-sufficient group of nations. I thought this one was very interesting, I wanted to share it. For ASEAN to have an interfaith convention of all major religions in ASEAN region. We are one of the world's most diverse regions. Okay? And for ASEAN integration to be felt at the grassroots level and not just among ASEAN elites, I believe that has been coming on through different ways. And um, to bring ASEAN citizens class closer together to travel, having an ASEAN citizen himself to uh, pursue an ASEAN identity. Okay, um, I want to take you very quickly through the next slide, please. There's a series of 16 questions um, comparing aspirations and expectations. We saw a constant pattern throughout from 1 to 16 where uh, for aspirations this was always strongly agreed but when it came to expectation it moved a little different. It shifted. Uh, it changed to instead of strongly agreed, agreed was higher. That was mainly the pattern except for a few. Um, can you please keep changing? Next, 
Okay. I said fifty strongly engaged with many six people. We saw a higher level of people being neutral on it. Next please. Um, next please. Human rights as well was more given out. Next please. Okay, for environmental issues, there appear to be high aspiration, but almost if you read it that way, most skepticism on its expectations. For uh, biodiversity, next one please. Um, Asian cities are less polluted as well, but uh, in terms of expectations, there was a <coughs> higher level of people being more neutral about it. Okay, so in conclusion, what I can say <coughs> is that it was a young population and their answers really reflected their interest, but we do see a high level of awareness. Uh, I believe there's some contrast with Aji Philippines or Indonesia Philippines where it was high among older people. Here, they seem pretty well informed. Okay, and there was a lot of positive expectations about us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, Ralph Vineda is the head of ASEAN Foundation. ASEAN Foundation has the biggest responsibility to really make ASEAN uh, to sell ASEAN. Uh, ASEAN Foundation is uh, an ASEAN leader's uh, uh, part of the position to really ensure that ASEAN people understand and feel and benefit from ASEAN. Okay, um, as a discussion, um, sort of listening to all the uh, four presentations, I'm, I'm very, very happy to um, see that um, there is a um, greater sense of ASEAN awareness, uh, particularly with young people. Uh, the foundation works quite closely with young people. Um, and demographics in ASEAN show that 50% of the ASEAN people are young people. So the work that we do uh, is actually addressing young people to basically make them think and feel in the ASEAN. Uh, we at the foundation believe that for ASEAN to be real to people, uh, you need to actually experience it. So the programs that we do are actually targeted to you know, young people. Um, in September, uh, at the end of September, we're actually organizing the uh, um, ASEAN Foundation uh, World ASEAN Meeting. So it's a very good initiative that actually gets uh, young people to actually role play senior officials. <laughs> Uh, and um, they find it very, very interesting because it's, the, uh, first, it's an actually an opportunity for them to actually, you know, understand uh, what we mean by ASEAN way and non-consensus, and it is an opportunity also for them to also meet with their peers from all over uh, ASEAN. So we actually get a team together uh, from the ten member states to actually do this. I'm sharing with you this because um, listening to the um, the studies that were done on the survey studies, um, what actually came out from this is that, okay, if you, if you want to build an ASEAN identity, it has to be linked to the interests of the issues that uh, the common people feel. And if um, any of our survey respondents actually read the uh, ASEAN framework 2025, the issues that have been identified are too much reflected in that. But the thing is, it's about also the dissemination of this information. <coughs> Uh, corruption figures very highly uh, in those surveys, yeah. Uh, but actually, if um, corruption actually is a priority for the ASEAN political security pillar, I don't know whether any of you realize it, but it is. Uh, they have uh, governments are concerned about it, uh, but I'm too, too, but I'm not sure to what extent that they are going to be addressing it because uh, in some of the uh, work that we do with the ASEAN CSR network. Um, they believe that, um, yes, corruption is a problem, but it's also a problem with businesses. So basically, businesses is also problematic in terms of corruption, it's not just government. So um, so the perception changes uh, in terms of understanding, so it's not just about government, uh, it's about businesses. And surprisingly, in some of the work that has been done um, uh, um, in the seminar that I attended, apparently young people are also um, in terms of corruption, they look at it as uh, it's not actually a problem as long as they benefit. So, you know, so it, when I think this morning we were talking about values of ASEAN. So, I don't know whether over the last 50 years our young people are sort of like being sort of inculcated to think that corruption is okay. 
uh, but some of them feel that it is okay in a sense that you don't get caught. So, so it's uh, something interesting that um, a study uh, that we asked the CSR network did. Uh, so it's basically demanding kind of um, age uh, university students. So something to think about in a sense when we talk about how we look at issues and how we are actually, um, you know, uh, sort of having an understanding of that. So uh, businesses uh, in the surveys that um, was uh, that came up from uh, those that they are saying that they're not getting uh, much of the of uh, ASEAN integration. Um, but I would like to just uh, also sort of reflect in that sense that businesses is uh, out to make uh, basically make money, yeah. But at the same time, in, in looking at ASEAN, they could also when we sort of wanted to be linked back to ASEAN identity uh, to be um, to talk about uh, how ASEAN is benefiting. Perhaps something that we could also uh, think about is to bring them into the fold to actually, you know, work with them to also help with um, this ASEAN awareness. I think it's good that awareness is high, but what I found missing, perhaps maybe the survey did not sort of review, was how are we basically going to multiply this effect, you know, of basically sharing and getting uh, people on, on, on board. You know, uh, ASEAN is a very um, exclusive circle in a sense that it involves uh, governments. And you know, we have a collaboration. You heard that from uh, the speeches this morning, uh, with uh, from Larry Marimas, uh, you know, um, the, um, the former uh, Deputy Secretary General, um, you know, Alicia Bala. So basically, there are camaraderie that you have by working together uh, collaboratively to actually address the problem. But this doesn't yet um, sort of multiply uh, with um, other groups. So but basically, we need to start to think about how do we actually do that. With civil society, yes, there are platforms for um, engagement. Uh, they basically can collaborate, but that's not very much in terms of a large scale to actually have a multiple uh, effect. Uh, so there are some things that I would, uh, I think these are the things that we need to actually uh, do. Um, just to get back to the, the initiative that we do, the Mall Arts and Meeting, we bring um, young people at the regional level. But what we find very interesting is because they felt that this is something very um, good for them in terms of their public uh, speaking, leadership and negotiation skills, they actually go back uh, to their universities and they organize this Mall Arts here in the university. So there's a ripple effect, a movement that we hope to start that to continue. So that it's not just at the regional, but it's basically bring uh, across. So these, as I said, um, for ASEAN to be felt and to be heard, you need to think, feel, and be ASEAN, and your programs will need to actually do that. I would like to also talk about media coverage. Uh, there was something that came out uh, in the surveys. Um, um, yes, media is very important, uh, but we have been working with journalists for the last two to three years, um, and um, journalists find it also very difficult to cover ASEAN. Um, they, they, they talk about, you know, it's uh, full of acronyms. Um, they find it very hard to get access to government officials. Um, they don't know actually how to tell the story of ASEAN. Um, and um, so we keep saying that there's more needed um, in terms of media coverage, but we also need to also capacitate our journalists. So whether or not um, it's journalism schools or whether it's sort of on the job training, um, journalists also need to be trained because what is happening right now in terms of news coverage is just about the summit. So all of, all of you will be familiar with the ASEAN handshake that all our leaders do, but we don't know how basically when they come up with a declaration, how these declarations that get translated into actionable things that you can actually benefit uh, you and I. So these um, are very hard to actually report on because, um, as, as I mentioned, the journalists don't get and um, there's not much time spent to also um, basically build the capacity of the journalists to follow. Because ASEAN is a regional, um, it's regional use, so it's very difficult for journalists if they are not provided the support to actually cover that. And we heard that in Indonesia, where they, they are competing with um, you know, more um, newsy news uh, that can be uh, sort of um, available at national level. So, um, so some of these things, uh, I think that we need to sort of like consider if we want to make sure that ASEAN awareness uh, or um, the heightened ASEAN awareness are uh, in the years to come. Um, and um, that's all for now. I will give three, three minutes for you all to have our discussions on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, today. I guess that we have 30 minutes to uh, have I correct. Uh, now, 20. Uh, 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 20. oh, just 20 minutes. 
Oh, all right. Um, so I guess I, I got to ask you, what's your reaction to the findings? How real is ASEAN to you? Uh, do you agree with those findings? How can ASEAN engage and benefit you and the people? Any comments, reactions uh, on this hand? Yes, ma'am, please uh, use the microphone and indicate your name and position. Yes, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. I am President of the Muslim and uh, we are busy uh, following up the uh, basic global debate tomorrow. <coughs> and uh, I know that there is an irony here. The aims, we are talking here of ASEAN, and majority of the countries here are Muslims. And uh, we, I felt, uh, in a, on my own personal notes, I felt that there is some kind of a, a, I don't know how to say it, but this is the first time I know the essence of ASEAN. So that is why when I was reading all about this book, oh, there's, we should be united at the economic side of the etc. etc. And uh, what made us, uh, I am with my, uh, I am with the assistant secretary here, Sally Martin now, of the tourism. Uh, and um, my name for is by Henrietta Padma Siswat. And we have an organization which is actually accepted by the Modena now people as civil society because this is a, uh, an organization composed of political science of the then Empire province of Cotabaco. So basically we're all political. But what we wanted here is to uh, bring back the old good days of our uh, forefathers who were ruler of the place and uh, good governance uh, you know, that was the concept of their leadership. Now, going back to this ASEAN socio-cultural socio community, uh, the mere fact that all of the countries, a majority of the uh, countries of the ASEAN are Muslim, I mean, uh, I, can, I quite can probably inform you that the Sultanates is one common denominator. Uh -huh. I think you forgot the Muslim people in this other part, the southern part of the country, which in silence, we are also having our some sort of uh, communication to our counterpart. I said counterpart because we know that we are not that rich a country, more so an individual, but we still have that bloodline in us, which everyone in Muslim compute community globally accept that there is the so-called blue blood in our community. Uh -huh. So we exercise the, uh, the royalties in us. Uh -huh. So there is some kind of connectivity. <laughs> Although in science, we do not know if this is accepted, but we already have some kind of uh, uh, showing our relationship among the uh, ASEAN countries, which also are uh, under Sultan, for example, Indonesia. Some of our members are invited to join the Sultanate of Indonesia. And when we visited the Sultanate of Brunei, we were accepted. And uh, uh, why is it that we do not know about this ASEAN, uh, 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 you know, concept? We should have included in our conversation about ASEAN. And uh, from this time on, uh, we are having this, we are planning to uh, talk with our uh, leaders in the Muslim area, that we might as well focus our attention in the socio-cultural community and nation building of ASEAN. Because uh, I know that the Muslim, uh, the, the, the so-called Bank Samoro does not even know what is this ASEAN. Probably some of them, but because of the corruption, they are uh, selfish in giving, uh, uh, in, uh, I mean, you know, the political uh, side of it. Uh, we are, we, we probably comes from political family, but what we wanted here is the good governance, the governance that will lead us as our parents. That is why I am, I am quite, uh, this is part of the matter. See, why are we not considered as part of the ASEAN? And our culture is, is 
help us to develop more stronger in, in the political side, or maybe in leadership, putting our community to be leaders in our own community. And by that, um, we are now into cultural heritage integrations, where in teachers from SCN teach us to integrate heritage in our education. We bring in examples, stories, to be integrated to our generations. We have to achieve, this is what we should be building, to be sustainable of culture. That's why when I asked what will be the, the thing that you have to be proud of this year, I said, if I one thing is, we as CN just like a rice, a bowl of rice, I mean, complementing the different flavors. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, any thoughts from you, folks? Uh, the idea of cultural heritage integration uh, was um, brought out. Uh, one of the papers in the, in, in the volume four, right, from by uh, Farish Noor, a uh, well known TV personality of CNA before, and also professor at uh, uh, NUS in Singapore. I actually looked at the history, and of course all this, the fact that before the colonial period, everybody was really moving around. And I wouldn't be surprised that the Bali and the Magidanao and the ones in the West, the ones in Dubai, or they all have or Sabah similarities. And um, we have not really Oh, you have about five minutes, sorry, I'm yeah, talking too much. But highlighting the similarities, this interconnectedness that each of us, has. the way we live now is the richest part of the Philippines, we have the strongest link uh, with the rest of ASEAN. And they have not really highlighted that. Uh, the way they dress, uh, in Pangalai, yeah, the dance of, of Sulu uh, or, or of Maranao is very much similar to what you've got in, in, in parts of, of Indonesia, for example. Um, so there is a significant commonality, and it's useful if we bring that as much uh, in the social culture. I don't know if as a secretary can highlight that much more, or the ASEAN Foundation. But there is indeed a significant potential for that cultural heritage integration. Uh, yes, sir. We already engage with the Department of Education, the integration of cultural heritage. We have the eight schools with the pilot study about this. Eight schools within the Philippines? Within our community, sir. Uh, but bring that now with other communities yes. in Sulawesi and, 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 and others to be possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any other? Yes. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Renata Pulinares from NH Philippines, a banana exporting uh, company. Um, I would just like to ask, since we have been talking about awareness, uh, was it also included in the survey? What is the perception of the ordinary people like me, the benefit of being an ASEAN member? And uh, if, if, if it was um, uh, if, if it was in the survey, oh, oh, what was the result? Thank you. Anybody from from the uh, yes? Uh, other um, other pressing issues in the positions. 
So yes, we were able to um, get responses on on that last Philippine issue. But as I um, um, also emphasized in, in my report, um, most of uh, the respondents and even um, the FP participants feel that we are benefiting only moderately from our membership in the ASEAN, and that is something that we have to address. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, Sheila. Uh, th any other one last uh, comment? Yes, 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 a lady. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh did, did you want to say anything? I add a couple from the ASEAN level. Um, I, there is a lot of interest in shopping and travel. So they saw those two things as benefits. So they want to have more products from other countries, and they want to be able to travel to other countries. So in addition to the ones that were just pushing. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, yes. Your name and everything. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen. Uh, I'm actually representing the Sudanese. It's a poetry organization here in Davao. But apart from that, I am also a rural impact sourcing advocate. As you can see, I'm a millennial. And I've been hearing a lot about the youth and the technology as you know drivers of this thing. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I would like to thank the, SD, the AS. ASCC for this because it makes me feel like we are we are being you know driven to be part of the community even more not just on a national level but on the SEM level. So I'd like to make a bit of suggestions. Um, I guess it's about time that we become more active with the startup communities because mm -hmm. millennials are more focused into entrepreneurship earning and all that stuff. And the startup community is a major driver for the millennials nowadays mm -hmm. to, you know, we want to earn, we want to make money, we want to travel. As previously Ms. Um, Lydia has said earlier, shopping and travel. That's, that's a very, very millennial thing. So <laughs> it's really obvious. And um, again, the startup community is, is um, if, if uh, some people here are not aware of what this startup community is. It's uh, it's about encouraging the youth to you know um, think about solutions that will resolve um, some community problems that will strengthen the community from within, and I think that's very important. So um, it is also I guess very important to focus on um, being involved in the rural impact sourcing because. You get a strength from within, and it's going to create a ripple effect. So I guess that's all. Thank you. Again, a very good, a very good intervention. Mr. Bajiati invited uh, Dr. Karen D uh, from Thailand. She's the head of C ASEAN, and uh, is we are networking with art, bringing business, art, culture together, technology. <laughs> Using, of course, internet and the like. Really uh, in link, net, linking up the millennials of Thailand and the rest of uh, ASEAN. I thought uh, that's the way forward in really getting a sense of who you are in ASEAN. Uh, it's now through the millennials, through the internet, through this startup communities, networking them. As I told you, a Thai company. It's a joint Thai Philippine Kung Laos company. This is the way forward. And uh, I, that's why I thought that was fantastic uh, uh, suggestion. Unfortunately, Cardi could not uh, get to, but there is a paper in the volume, on bill of volume four, specifically on this, which is linking art, culture, business technology together where the young ones are essentially going to go. Thank you. Uh, I guess there is no, no more time. Uh, is there any more? No more time? And, and one last question? Right? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. but, but the last part, if you don't mind. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sondi Naya from Washington State University. And I am working in a museum and with the uh, IP communities. Uh, at this point of time in our university, there is one direction that we are making, like going back to the root. 
So we lead our students to go back to local history, local language, and this is a very significant uh, step of the university because we are very the name of the province. Uh, my question is, is this particular direction in going back to the root would not be, not necessarily in conflict, but would not be uh, giving a sort of struggle in going to that direction for a season. So our, our, our understanding is going back to the root is one direction and going to a season is another direction. How can we reconcile the two directions? Because we really need that, is we are including that in our curriculum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anybody would like to run through that or you want to run through it? Uh, there is actually no inconsistency as far as I see it. Uh, which is, the, in the world of globalization, the premium is local. Deep understanding of who you are, whether to a global perspective. The ASEAN identity being put here is a sense of commonness, dealing with the common concerns. And if you notice, most of them have common concerns, which means if you work together, dealing with those common concerns, then you have a greater sense of commonality and, com and community. In, and of course, the interchange and interaction learning from one another will help you deepen your sense of belonging in ASEAN. But it doesn't mean that you're less Filipino, less from, from Malay Malay. Uh, uh, am I correct? You're, you're from, uh, from uh, uh, Malay Malay. So um, it, it is, you go local, deeply understand who you are. And you know what? When you go deeper into it, you see commonality among your various communities. Because our more recent, is your colonial heritage. But the more deeper heritage is very common to the rest of Southeast Asia. So actually, you're getting into the deep foundation of who we are as ASEAN. I, I hope I'm correct, I, I agree with you. With that, I think it's a good way of ending this discussion. And thank you very much. And please give them a very good